It is a glittering night in the literary calendar. It is the richest book prize in Canada. Of course, I'm talking about the Scotiabank Giller Prize awarded last night. And let's take you to the ceremony. And the winner of the 2019 Scotiabank Giller Prize is... Ian Williams for his novel, Reproduction. There was the reaction at Ian Williams' table as his name was announced as the winner of the Giller Prize. Let's show you the book cover, the book, the novel for which he has been feted. Here it is, Reproduction. His very first novel, not his first writing, but his first novel, isn't that extraordinary? The biggest prize in Canadian literature for your very first crack at a novel. I'm saying that with a big smile on my face because I have to match Ian Williams' own smile. <laughs> Ian's in my studio this morning. Uh, after that great moment, so nice to meet you and congratulations. Thank you, Thank you, Heather. It's so delightful to have you in today uh, and to talk about that. Tell me about the celebrations. Tell oh, me about what you did last night. I'm not very good at celebrating, actually, but you know what was really sort of overwhelming it's just the good wishes and the good energy of a lot of people in the Canadian writing community um, and so you know to focus the on messages the you've been getting and messages things? yeah my phone's blowing up but just like the people in the room right so much goodwill um, in that room for Canadian literature and so not not a whiff of cynicism I think that was great isn't that wonderful to that have that wonderful. moment I when you talk about moments mm. when you um, had your name announced mm -hmm and it came out, and there you were receiving that. You told our Deanna Sumanak Johnson oh. that in that moment, your history rushes back to you. I thought <laughs> right. that was such a beautiful turn. Uh, Who and what rushed back to you? Well, it sounds narcissistic, but mostly myself. Right? It, <laughs> like, I saw myself at six years old, and I saw myself at nine years old in, like, grade four, and I saw Wait, myself... Wait, six in Trinidad. Six in Trinidad. Nine, nine in nine Brampton. Nine in Brampton, and, you know, like, a 16-year-old in high school, and then at University of Toronto. And, like, just seeing myself in all of these contexts, and, like... There's a lot of history that goes into this moment, right? It's a moment that, that folks see. But there's this continuous self that's been gradually like working working forward. So And was this the dream of that six year old in Trinidad? Maybe no, no. no. Like that six year old wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> but I mean, uh, dreams can morph and all of that, yeah. but it, somewhere the dream is to write books, right? And like all of this is literally like icing on top of that. Good wedding cake icing. Isn't that amazing? But like I, I'm happy with the book. So. You're the central figure, obviously, in your own story. But who is responsible for that morphing? Uh, you know, who do you, who are you thinking of, who turned the wannabe pilot into this incredible award-winning writer? They're important people. They're like really great public school teachers. Yes. Um, at all levels, they're great university profs. They're great parents involved and. You know, just communities of people in churches and black communities, just um, too many people to name who've just said encouraging things at just the right time. Um, and so it's hard to like enumerate all of the people that matter in your life. But you're thinking of them all. Of course. Uh, you, you, that acceptance speech was lovely, obviously, mm. uh, that you delivered. You had a little bit of a spontaneous moment that in case anyone missed <sighs> our early coverage, um, one of the people to whom you paid credit and tribute. Let's listen to that together, okay? okay. Here we go. <laughs> So I've got like notes here of people that I need to thank, but maybe I'll just start like with my heart first. And I, Margaret Atwood over there. It was the first book I bought with my own money at a bookstore in Brampton. I was so amazing. <laughs> she's there celebrating her 80th birthday. You pay tribute to her, Aww. and she's there to hear it. I didn't know she was going to be there last night, and I, 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 I do love her. And like, I, I think people feel this way about authors. Like, you spend so much time with them, reading them, and they don't know. They're off doing their own thing, and she's off being great elsewhere in the world. And I spent my summers reading her like books of poetry and revisiting them and so I feel like I've just grown up alongside her so. but what I want I have to ask yeah. what was that first book that you bought and how did you decide on that one the circle game pink cover her face in an oval on the front um, yeah it gave me a literal face to Canadian lit and it showed me like just the brave adventurous things that folks were doing as early as the 60s. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I still have that book. It's still really You really special. do? Yeah. The other thing that you, that you um, comment that you made, or I, wait, before I move on to that, did you have a chance to talk to her personally? I, I wonder, did. did you, she's and, lovely. Tell me about that exchange. Yeah. <laughs> she's lovely. Like, I've got a photo, and it's now going to become my wallpaper on my phone for a <laughs> long time. It's just, yeah, it's incredibly special, right? And it's special in such a deep way that I can't convey to people. I say, yeah, here's a photo with Margaret Atwood, and that, that's great, but... The depth of it is not Margaret Atwood. The depth is all of those summers I spent with her. 
like in the equivalent of a cottage, right? But a cottage in my Brampton, Brampton bedroom. You said to Deanna Sumanak, and we'll listen to another piece of tape, Deanna Sumanak Johnson, about what the shock of winning uh, for a writer. It's not yeah. like, you know, you're an athlete, is what you said. <laughs> Let's listen to a little bit of that exchange, too. Maybe this is what pro athletes feel like, or like tennis players when they win Wimbledon or the US Open. But like, we don't write books for this moment here, and then it happens, and you're totally off guard as a human. Incredibly special, and all of your history just kind of like rushes back to you. And I imagine myself as a boy in Brampton, and I imagine myself as a boy in Trinidad. And just like, yeah, there's a lot of history that goes into sort of standing right here. So we talked about the history a little bit. You hear the emotion in your voice, yeah. huh? <laughs> That's unusual. I'm usually very com composed, you know, so. <laughs> well, this caused to, to let that emotion in. But, but that, it's so interesting how you made that, that analogy with, like, you're like the Bianca and rescue, right? This is she your is big wonderful. moment. <laughs> she is wonderful. And Serena Williams in the room there with her, right? <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah. it's not something that you're prepared for, but that you adulation. Can't. No, you can't prepare for it, no. And yet... You are $100,000 wealthier <laughs> this morning. You are about to be the recipient of the Giller effect that would get a huge bump in, in, uh, in, in sales. Oh, is is yeah. it really the tradition after right. that award? Um, right. How do you think your life's going to change? Yeah, I haven't thought about the money yet. I think the money will hit me when I go to like pay my you know, telephone bill or something like that. Um, but the change, you know, I, I really think it's important to just kind of continue on the day to day, you know, to eat like granola the next day and boil an egg and just go forward very steadily with my job and my student work and in my office and playing with my tennis partners and all of that, right? Just day by day. It will all sort of hit. Otherwise, it'll overwhelm and swallow me up and take me off to sea, right? So. You talked about your classes, your creative writing prophet at UBC, and they'll be cheering you on. I'm sure when you get back to campus, you'll have something there. Here, I have to ask a couple of other things quickly, What's too, that? because here's the thing. This is for novel, but you're like a rising star in poetry circles, too. I mean, for you, how do those two intersect? And, poetry and fiction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's book number four in first novel. But I, I describe it as being bilingual, right? Sort of, um, I feel like comfortable in poetry, and I feel comfortable... Um, in fiction and you know sometimes you dream in English and you speak in French and it depends who you're speaking to and about what so yeah it's it feels perfectly comfortable both elements to me so then which is coming out next more poetry, poetry. or another novel when, what can we expect year. next year poetry next year and the next novel though it's called disappointment so <laughs> after families <laughs> and reproduction then comes disappointment, disappointment. what's it about what's it my about midlife you? sort of I anticipate a midlife crisis <laughs> I turned 40 this year and I anticipate like it's gonna be a little bit rough for a couple of years going forward so yeah <laughs> Can't wait to see that. Thank you so much for the time Thank and you, congratulations. Heather. You enjoy all of this uh, so and whatever is coming your way. Ian Williams, this year's winner, the 2019 Scotiabank Giller Prize winner for the book, Reproduction.